You're watching Steve TV. That's right, Steve TV. Sacred Women's Site. Can't show you. Is it sacred? Uh, secret Women's Business. None of yours. I am absolutely tingling. We're allowed to film this part of the rock. Early morning sun, I don't even know what time it is, I don't care. That rock, this is just one end of the rock. It is huge. Yeah, you can see that there's a, a little, there's a, a, a walkway thingy that goes up past that grass. Hang on, there it is. There's a walkway thing that goes all the way up the side. This is one of the walks, but the, 
and you people don't want us to walk on the rock because all these dirty white people with their bloody boots are ruining the rock and we really don't want to ruin it how wonderful amazing what a tour I'm very impressed someone that's passing or uh, an initiation ceremony for someone moving up uh, the ranks within a group that's only very it's it's sort of the last resort they don't intend to walk it unless they really have to uh, for significant reasons across two significant uh, sacred sites as you do climb up uh, for this reason the Ananu want it to be closed they want people not to climb however the Australian government and it's part of that lease agreement uh, want it to stay open. As I've said, until under 20% of people climb, it will remain open. Their biggest fear is that uh, the revenue that's generated in the park is um, brought in by the climb. They think that without the climb, people wouldn't come here. And uh, so it's our job to offer more in the way of education and, and walks and things and uh, to attempt to deter people to climb. Uh, around 50% of people will come out with the intention to climb, but of that 50, at least half uh, actually do do the climb. Most people don't know a lot about the history or uh, understand a lot about why they don't want us to climb before they get here. And um, it's good to see that those people are changing their mind or making that choice. Uh, people climb for all sorts of different reasons. Uh, I've got friends that have climbed it just for the physical challenge. Uh, lots of people for the photographic opportunity and lots of people because you know it's the only chance they might get uh, in their entire life. The climb's only open around 60 days of the year. If it's too hot it'll be closed. Uh, any sign of Rendell uh, Rendel Wayne? Wendell Rain. Rendell uh, Wayne. Rendell Wayne. Um, yeah there's just all sorts of safety regulations and it is at the discretion of the ranges. So on a 40 degree day down here it can be anywhere between 10 and 15 degrees hotter on the rock. So the rock works like a sponge. So you're looking at 55 degrees on the rock. Uh, dehydration is the biggest killer. So people heading up there not drinking enough water and that heat really radiating off the rock as well as the general temperature of the day. Uh, depending on what you read, there's been between sort of 35 and 42 deaths uh, here in relation to the climb. So. Uh, and that's not just people falling, there's people that have had uh, cardiac problems as a result of climbing and possibly shouldn't have been up there in the first place. Uh, it seems as uh, all sorts of people climb and it seems that common sense isn't uh, as common as you might think <laughs> when it comes to doing the climb. I watched a gentleman a couple of weeks ago carry his toddler up in just his backpack, just a zip up backpack up there. Uh, I've watched a five-year-old run from the base of the chain almost all the way down to this big mm. rock here. <laughs> um, we had a gentleman come out in a full lycra suit and attempt to ride his mountain bike mm. down. Oh god. Um, <laughs> we had a whole school group head up there with their teacher and for whatever reason the teacher didn't take any water up with her. Uh, they all got to the top and there's a whole series of pools and catchments on the top. And she said, oh, let's just do it like, like the Bushmen. We'll just drink out of these pools. And um, obviously all the kids were incredibly sick. And the bus driver resigned, driving them back to Alice. Vomit everywhere. It uh, wasn't the nicest. So there's all sorts. There was a, uh, <laughs> at times it could be entertaining. The chain that you see, that only goes the first third of the way up. There's about, a t uh, I think, two and a half kilometres after the chain. And um, it just keeps going. It's a progressive climb, but it's very steep in places, and it just goes on forever. So they say allow about two hours to get up and down. Now, if you're heading up there in, in sandals in a singlet with no water, even on a 25 degree day, you'll get pretty, uh, pretty hot there. Often I'll see people out just to the left here in these two shaded uh, depressions, standing there taking photos. Um, the gusts of wind over there are quite significant often you'll see hats flying off and if you're silly enough to try and retrieve your hat then um, you can only imagine what might happen. Uh, we did have a woman get all the way up she charged up full of confidence got to the top of the chain there turned around and got 
complete vertigo, panicked and wrapped herself around the chain. It took seven rangers to carry her down. <laughs> <laughs> Silly cow. <laughs> Oh, maybe she planned that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe so she did. That's about as extensive as the rescue operations get. However, if anyone is injured or uh, has a heart attack up on the climb there, they have helicoptered people off. However, it's very expensive. There was a gentleman last year. Uh, it was a 42 degree day. The climb was closed. Uh, he decided to climb anyway. He had Crocs on, those rubber gardening oh, shoes. What an idiot. Away he went well, that and uh, his Crocs melted yeah. uh, about three quarters of the way up the chain. <laughs> and uh, he got first degree burns on his feet and had to be helicoptered out. My God. Uh, so for that reason, the safety aspect is another reason why they want it to be closed. So it's not so much, uh, I guess, you know, pe people getting hurt. It's more the risk of uh, those people climbing that really shouldn't be. So h heart attacks are the biggest, biggest killer in relation to the climb. It's not a high percentage. Okay, this is the real base of the rock. It's a bit windy, you may not hear me. This is tough luck. Up there you can see. fence that goes up. It's massive and it goes for a couple of kilometres beyond what we can see as well. This is only, I think it's about six kilometres around the base of the rock. And it's made of iron, iron ore and the, the black marks on the, on the red where the trails from the water have happened. That's actually a, a black lichen. And it's a, an awesome place. Can't believe I'm here. Around that corner is somewhere sacred, so I'm not allowed to film around there. Nor would I want to. Got to respect the indigenous people because it, it's not their rock. They, they don't own the rock, but they're the caretakers. They want to make sure that the rock is here for the gods, for Australia and the universe. Okay, it's time for us to go. Next part of the tour.